the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace, mercy, and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. And with your spirit. Good morning and welcome as we are privileged again this day to gather the giftedness of Holy Eucharist. And this is throughout our country is known as Catechetical Sunday, declared by the bishops of the United States. A special time for us to reflect on the catechesis, the ministry of sharing God's word that all of us have by our baptism. So let us prepare to celebrate the sacred liturgy as we call to mind our sins and our failings. Let us ask for God's mercy that we might more worthily celebrate this mass. Lord Jesus, you are the mercy of God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to call sinners to new life. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us to be merciful with others. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us from our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God, God in the, in the highest, highest, and on, and on earth, earth peace to, to people, people of goodwill. Of goodwill. We, we praise you, you we bless you, you we adore you, we glorify, glorify you, we give, give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Lord God Heavenly King, O God, God Almighty Father, Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ only begotten Son, Son, Lord God, Lord God Lamb of God, God, Son of the Father, you take, you take away the sins of the world, have, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you, For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the, with the Holy Spirit, Spirit, in the, in the glory, glory of God, God the Father. Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, Creator and Ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy, grant we may serve you with all of our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once to your people, whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt, for they have become depraved. They have soon turned aside from the way I pointed out to them making for themselves a molten calf and worshiping it, sacrificing to it and crying out, This is your God, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. I see how stiff-necked this people is, continued the Lord to Moses. Let me alone, then, that my wrath may blaze up against them to consume them. Then I will make of you a great nation." But Moses implored the Lord, his God, saying, Why, O Lord, should your wrath blaze up against your own people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, with such great power and with so strong a hand? Remember your servants Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, and how you swore to them by your own self, saying, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky. And all this land that I promised, I will give your descendants as their perpetual heritage. So the Lord relented in the punishment he had threatened to inflict on his people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will rise and go to my father. I will, I will rise and, and go, go to, to my, my father. father. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt, and of my sin cleanse me. I will, I will rise and, and go, go to, to my, my Father. Father. A clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. I will, I will rise, rise and, go and go to, to my, my Father. Father. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. My sacrifice, O God, is a contrite spirit, a heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. I will, I will rise, rise and, and go, go to, to my, my Father. Father. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I am grateful to him who has strengthened me, Christ Jesus our Lord, because he considered me trustworthy in appointing me to the ministry. 
I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and arrogant, but I have been mercifully treated because I acted out of ignorance in my unbelief. Indeed, the grace of our Lord has been abundant, along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> this saying is trustworthy and deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Of these, I am the foremost. But for that reason, I was mercifully treated, so that in me, as the foremost, Christ Jesus might display all his patience as an example for those who would come to believe in him for everlasting life. To the King of Ages, incorruptible, invisible, the only God, honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear Jesus, at which the Pharisees and the scribes murmured, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then he addressed this parable to them. Who among you, if he has a hundred sheep and loses one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wasteland and follow the lost one until he finds it? And when he finds it, he puts it on his shoulders in jubilation. Once arrived home, he invites friends and neighbors in and says to them, Rejoice with me because I have found my lost sheep. I tell you, there will be likewise more joy in heaven over one repentant sinner than over ninety-nine righteous people who have no need to repent. What woman, if she has ten silver pieces and loses one, does not light a lamp and sweep the house in a diligent search until she has retrieved what she has lost? And when she finds it, she calls in her friends and neighbors to say, Rejoice with me, I have found the silver piece I lost. I tell you, there will be the same kind of joy before the angels of God over one repentant sinner. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So again, this is Catechetical, Catechetical Sunday. And it's a wonderful opportunity to reflect on, again, the role that each one of us in the church has as part of the catechesis, the ministry, the mission that is so foundational to who we are, God's people. And it's in the midst of celebrating this day that we remember well the words of Jesus, commissioning his disciples, commissioning the church just before his ascension in another part of, of a gospel where he says, go and baptize all the nations, teach them everything I have told you and know that I am with you always to the end of time. The word catechesis actually comes from a Greek word that means to echo or to resound. And fundamental, again, to all of us who are the baptized is that we are to, to resound and to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ by our words and by our lives each and every day. And it's always at baptism ceremonies and liturgies that, that you as parents are commissioned to be, again, ones who can create a great household of, of vibrant faith, of faith that flourishes, that parents make a promise to God and to their child at baptism that they will do everything in their power to help that child grow the gift of faith that God gives to him or her through the waters of baptism. And so parents are the first catechists and in the ways of life, certainly, as well as in the ways of faith. But it's also on this day that we're reminded that it takes a whole community, as someone once said, to, to be able to raise children, to be able to support all of us, no matter how young or more experienced in life we happen to be. And so whole communities, the church, are involved in that same catechesis of proclamation and helping that formation of disciples of Jesus Christ. And in our parishes, throughout our diocese, and throughout our country this day, in a very special way, we recognize and we celebrate and we commission 
those who have accepted the particular ministry of catechists, those who are in our Catholic schools, who, who teach on a daily basis, those who are in faith formation programs in our parishes and all different levels to be able to, again, catechize, to be teachers in the name of the church, in the name of Jesus Christ and supporting parents. It's precisely what the church does is to support all parents in their primary role of catechesis for their children. And so all of that goodness that we celebrate in a very special way this day and know that all of us continue as lifelong learners in the formation of what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. And so very much a part of the proclamation, that resounding of the good news of Jesus Christ, of, our, of who our God is, is that we continually learn about and discover the character of God and the nature of Jesus Christ in a very special way in the readings that we just heard proclaimed today. First of all, about the Israelites in the book of Exodus in the first reading. Paul in great re re revelation about himself and an appreciation of how his life totally changed because of Jesus Christ, because of God's word. And then those couple of wonderful stories in the, in the gospel that are very memorable about the lost sheep and the lost coin. And there's one that follows also the very familiar story of the lost sons, sometimes known as the prodigal son. They're very familiar stories about, again, inviting us to focus on about how God works and how God is very present to us. And a couple of the things that I just find really encouraging and inspiring about all of those readings today is that goodness of our God who is always, always reaching into our lives to invite us into deeper, deeper relationship, to get very close to the Lord, to discover the Lord. And it's that tenacity of God that we hear in all of those readings to the, toward the Israelites of the Old Testament, poor, toward Paul and his conversion and becoming an apostle. And again, with the, the sheep, the shepherd and the woman in the gospel is that image of our God who never gives up on us, who's always reaching out to us and then calling us into our lives, our, uh, into God's life. Our God who knows us so well and knows well that, that how lost we can become and actually how difficult and dangerous life can be without faith. And so God is always calling, always inviting us, respecting our choices, but never giving up and calling us. And especially in times that we feel lost in our own lives from the Lord, from the church, or even a sense of loss of feeling abandonment sometimes, isn't it true? In our, in our aging and our sicknesses, our disabilities. But the assurance of the readings today again is our God saying to every one of you, every one of us, I am always with you. The other great character of God that is, resounds loud and clear in the readings today is God's patience. God had great patience with the chosen people of Israel and out of tough love, as we hear about in the first reading this morning, that God was again one who was continually pushing and calling the Israelites to return and to allow God to be primary in their lives. Even Paul in the second reading admits to how patient God had been with him. And certainly, again, the patience and the diligence that images uh, God's patience with the story of the, the shepherd with the lost sheep and the woman looking for the coin. So hopefully this morning, these readings bring us, no matter where we are in our faith and our lives, the assurance that, first of all, it's our focus is on our God and bring us comfort and inspiration and gratitude for God's great love. And especially to pray for all catechists in our parishes who take on that very special role of being resounding, echoing ministers of God's word. I believe in, in one, one God, God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God.
begotten, begotten not, not made, made consubstantial, consubstantial with the Father, Father. through him all things were made. made. For, for us men and for our salvation, salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As disciples of Jesus, it is our duty to pray for others, especially those most in need of mercy. So we offer these petitions. For people of all nations, that they may always live the mercy and goodness of our God, and become instruments of justice and peace for all, especially in war-torn regions of the Middle East, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all leaders of faith, may they faithfully minister the truth of the gospel and the healing power of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the handicapped, the disabled, the elderly, the overlooked, and those ignored or rejected, that they may experience the healing power of Christ's love, especially through the ministry of others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the apostolate to the handicapped and the diocese of Madison, for the staff of WISC-TV, and for caregivers who support all in need, especially those with disabilities and various challenges in their lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the faithful departed, especially Donald Heyer Sr., the father of Monsignor Donald Heyer of our diocese, the special intention of this Mass. May they enjoy the promise of eternal life in God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we ask God to receive our own special intentions that we now offer from the quiet of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful God, hear our prayers today for those we love and for whom we are concerned and all those who, must, who are in most need of our prayers. We ask all of this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Thank you, Jack. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these, your servants' offerings, that what each has offered in the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fountain of holy, all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirits upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim Claim your death, death, O Lord, and profess, and profess your, your resurrection. resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth, earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily, daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously make grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, for the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the, and the glory, glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Thank you. Let's minister to those near us. Jesus' word of peace. Peace be with you, Todd. Thank you. Peace be with you, Jack. Thank you. Peace be with you, Henry. Thank you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The 
body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies so that its effects, and not our own desires, may always prevail in us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass has ended. Let us go to bring Christ's love, mercy, and peace to others. Thanks be to God. Father Larry Bakke, Director of the Apostolate to the Handicapped and Pastor of St. Clair of Assisi Parish, Monroe, was our presider of worship this morning. Also from St. Clair of Assisi Parish, I am Todd Slushy, your lector today. My sons, Jack and Henry Slushy, served as our acolytes. Michelle Guyette interpreted the Mass for the deaf. Our music ministry was provided by Val Thomas of St. Pius X Parish in Cambridge. It is because of the continued generosity of WISC-TV and their commitment to public service and social concern for the elderly, disabled, and handicapped of all faiths that we are able to bring this television mass to you, an important part of the ministry of the Apostolate to the Handicapped of the Diocese of Madison. We are grateful to the management and staff of Channel 3 who make our weekly sharing in faith, prayer, and Eucharist so excellent in both production and dignity of worship. Thank you for joining us in prayer this morning, and please join us in this program of hope and inspiration next Sunday morning at 7 a.m. here on Channel 3. Until then, may you know the presence of God's mercy in your lives and serve Him with your whole heart and soul.